and we're going to begin 19.3 global wind patterns we have two objectives for this section identify factors that affect global wind patterns describe the strengths and weaknesses of the three celled circulation model and use the model to explain prevailing winds and pressure regions big question here is how do global wind patterns form now some key ideas both earth's rotation and the uneven heating of earth by the sun affect wind patterns the three celled circulation model helps to explain prevailing winds and pressure regions there's our list of vocabulary and let's begin first I'd like to present a question to you what would happen if earth did not rotate and there were no Coriolis effect well if we look at the winds the winds at the poles the cold air would just sink and wind would blow along the surface from the poles to the equator just as you see here in this circulation pattern so it would heat up as it went to the equator it would rise come back to the pole get cold sink back down and you can see how this would occur throughout the the earth now the sun heats the equator hot air rises and flows toward the poles this circulation is called a circulation cell now the cool dense air leads to high pressure at the surface and the warm light air is low is low pressure at the surface so this is what it would look like if there were no uh, Coriolis effect so it would be one large circulation cell in each hemisphere low pressure and rising air are common near the equator surface high pressure and sinking air are common at latitudes near 30 degrees and at the poles so if you look at this three celled three celled circulation model you notice that up here at the poles at 90 90 degrees you see the arrows are going down towards the pole it also occurs at 30 degrees see the arrows are going down towards the surface of the planet those are areas of high pressure now the low pressure areas are any areas around the 60 degrees north you see the pressure goes up so it would be low pressure on the surface and at the equator as well the pressure is going, going up so these areas depending on where that circulation pattern is taking place can determine if there's a low pressure system or a high pressure system now Earth's rotation affects wind patterns these factors are represented in the three celled, celled model of Earth's wind patterns the boundary at 60 degrees latitude both north and south where air flowing away from the polar regions collides with warm air moving up from the lower latitudes is called the polar front so there's a polar front right here in the north there's also a polar front down here in the south so what happens to the air at the equator remember what happens in the properties of warm air so if it is warmed becomes less dense and then rises and flows towards the poles how about air at the poles it cools becomes dense and then sinks and flows towards the equator where in this simplified model would you expect to find cloudy conditions and why think back on how clouds form what has to happen for clouds to form typically they're near the equator cloud formation is associated with areas of low pressure and rising humid air now why do you think what do you think of when you think of cells cells in the body battery cell jail cell some common uh, answers to that question and what do they all have in common they're all compartments the same applies here in the three celled circulation model the atmosphere surrounding earth can be modeled as six large circular shaped cells with winds tending to flow in the same direction within that same cell so you have the green area where it's rising and sinking in the atmosphere or the green arrows where it's showing that cell as well as the Coriolis effect dictates and bends and deflects air in certain directions depending on where it is in the planet where it is on the planet so which wind system most strongly affects the continental United States think about the United States latitude and which hemisphere it's in prevailing southwesterlies so they've named each of these different types of cells in the direction based on the direction that they travel the direction that they move and where they're located on the globe 
So we have what are called prevailing southwesterlies. Winds are always named by their origin, where they originate. So the winds here above no 30 degrees north originate south and move towards the north, so they're southwesterlies. They're going from the west to the east. Now there are wind patterns the three-celled circulation model does not explain. Here's an example of some surface winds that are not explained in the three-celled circulation model. Now looking at this model, you see that lower speeds are down here in the blue areas and then higher speeds are in the green areas. So the blue areas show wind spiraling around a high pressure system. You can see that right in here, up in here in the blue, down here in the in the southern hemisphere as well. The yellow areas show winds spiraling, spiraling around a low pressure system. You see right here near the 60 degree south latitude mark. There's a few little yellow ones up here as well, but most of them are down here in the southern hemisphere. So one knot is equal to about 1852 meters per hour. Where are the areas with the highest wind speeds? The yellow areas in the southern hemisphere are good. The lowest speeds will be in the blue areas. Now middle latitudes or mid latitudes are between latitudes of about 30 and 60 degrees. In the Atlantic Ocean currents and winds parallel one another. So we have the North Atlantic drift paralleling the westerlies. The North Equatorial current paralleling the northeast trade winds. The south equatorial current, southeast trade winds, westerlies, the west wind drift. So the winds can also drive the currents. Now in the mid latitudes, surface winds are determined by transient pressure systems, the change in air pressure, except near the equator, where upper level winds are generally westerly rather than north or south. So you see right here, right next to the to the equator, they are generally westerly at the equator. Now uneven heating of earth by the sun creates pressure zones and wind belts. We have something called the Intertropical Convergence Zone, ITCZ, which is one of those wind belts. Now this low pressure zone at the equator where the winds from the northern and southern hemispheres converge varies from season to season. In the ITCZ the air is hot and humid and there is little wind, little or no wind and rain is common. This region is called the doldrums. Sailing vessels were often stuck for days due to the lack of wind in these doldrums. Now between 20 and 35 degrees latitude, air generally sinks forming subtropical highs. This sinking air has very little precipitation and, in, and these regions contain many of Earth's deserts. So if you look around the planet and you look around that 30 degree mark latitude north and south, you'll notice that many of Earth's deserts lie within that region. Now because sailing ships were likely to have little or no wind, horses being transported would be thrown overboard to lighten the load. That's how they get their name, the horse latitudes. Now easterly blown trade winds are located between the doldrums and horse latitudes and are warm and steady in both direction and speed. Merchants use them whenever possible as trade routes for their sailing ships. Polar easterlies are formed due to the high pressure regions at the poles where cold air sinks at the poles. Now winds that usually blow from the same direction such as the trade winds and the polar easterlies are called prevailing winds. So that gives you a little bit of a background on these terms and where they come from. Okay, that's it for 19.3. If you go to the section review, try your, uh, your knowledge and how well you've uh, understood these concepts with 1 through 5. If you have any questions, just let us know. But those are five good practice questions that will help you review these concepts. And we'll have our final section coming up.